What's happening, guys? I hope everybody had a fantastic weekend or last couple months uh, since I last did a Sunday video. Uh, the crew, the team has been doing a phenomenal job. Uh, I love to see that just as many people are watching and, you know, it's just as engaging. And, um, you know, Chris has been doing a phenomenal job at sort of leading uh, leading the charge and, and really bringing on guests uh, that make sense with the current market environment. And uh, I, I think that uh, that's pretty unique. I think that's a, a good way to do it. Uh, it keeps things fresh uh, as well as sort of... Um, you know, going back, taking some of the feedback that you guys, uh, you know, had have given uh, and, and just really, you know, what is Sunday Scan a, about? And and to me, uh, it's always about sort of giving you sort of a, a, a recap of what's working in this market and what's not uh, and sort of how to use that uh, and, and prepare for the week ahead, as well as some, you know, potential uh, trade examples and or uh, trade potentials for for the week uh, ahead. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm really proud of the team and uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, and, uh, you know, we will continue to uh, bring out all kinds of people. You know, a lot of times people uh, got to got to get uncomfortable to become uh, comfortable. And, you know, usually a lot of people are, are camera shy. And, uh, you know, I think even last week, uh, Dawson did an interview with uh, Anthony uh, and he did a um, the Sunday video. And, and uh, you know, there was a lot of good, good conversation, good topics. And uh, I think highly relatable to a lot of the, the traders that watch these uh, these videos. So um, at any rate, Let's get right into it. So obviously Friday, uh, great example of the tools that we've built in IU. <clears throat> I'm still beta testing a bunch of uh, these things. We have a new filings thing that uh, is underway right now. It is accessible, um, but it's not 100% yet. Um, but uh, I've always had and built out um, tools with, with Macs uh, that you know I need for my own edge and my own strategies. And uh, the pace at which I was able to post that GME filing, um, you know, fill and post the, it at such a, a quick pace to the to the room is exactly uh, sort of the, the goals that, uh, you know, this whole programming that I've, you know, focused on uh, is all about. Um, so hopefully you guys were able to take advantage of, of the quickness on that GME uh atm offering that uh you know came out and uh put that out in the room within within seconds so um the uh one of the one of the biggest things i think right now is there's going to be a lot of big pnls going around we talk about this often stay in your lane you know you versus you and all that kind of stuff but you know just remember um you, you have to continually um kind of reevaluate these situations. For me, it's it's difficult because I'm trying to do that pivot in, in my life uh, where, you know, it's uh, I, I want to put more focus on, on family and kids and, and just kind of, you know, more relax um, since I've been on for, you know, basically 20 years straight. Um, but then these things like FFIE and AMC and GME kind of sneak up and it's like, you know, what what do you do? You know, back to you know, what you were doing in prior years, or do you, you know, do what you're trying to do and not care, you know, and just trade normal? Do you, do you, uh, you know, go for it? Or do you just continue to take that path that you're, you know, working towards? And, you know, the same thing happened with a lot of the great traders that uh, I've, I've seen come and go uh, in a good way where, you know, they kind of are at that point of, um, that, that crossroads and it's taken them probably two years to figure out, you know, which way they, they want to go. Um, and the big decision, uh, or, or the, or the common decision that I've seen is pretty much coming to the desk after those 500 to 1000% winners or the GMEs, the AMCs, um, the BBBYs, you know, big things like that. SMCI, NVIDIA, right. NVIDIA this week coming into the split, there's going to be, there's a catalyst driven move. There's a parabolic move um, that deserves to be, uh, you know, focused on. 
Uh, but what they cut out is just the day-to-day -day stuff because they come and they they want to make sure that the trade opportunity uh, is is going to produce at least X, right? Otherwise, it's not going to move the needle for them. So therefore, it's not really worth uh, you know exchanging their time uh, unless it's at least worth X. Uh, and so that's the struggle. Um, I, I would say as far as, you know, IU, I'm like 90% of the way through uh, my pivot and my goals and, and, you know, exactly what I wanted to do. But like personally, personal development uh, and sort of my own trading and, and sort of uh, pulling back in that sense, uh, I'm probably like 70, 75% of the way there. So um, I've definitely made more strides in the right direction um mostly and and thankfully to to josh who's uh, my right hand man on on this whole um pivot just absolutely spearheading um and and managing the teams and uh you know everything that you've seen uh is is josh managing that so i'm i'm highly appreciative of uh of of him um now, uh, I'm going to talk about GME. Obviously, I know a lot of you guys, uh, I'm sure, have questions about that. Um, some of the things that I learned in 2020 that I wish I had learned faster and sort of how it applies here. Um, but uh, first and foremost, um, Centerpoint, obviously, haven't talked about them in, in a while. Um, as you guys know, um, with our partnership, we always, uh, I always kind of twist their arm for the best deals. Um, so, uh, right now, uh, center point, there's a link here, uh, but, uh, you can get different credits, but if you fund your account with a hundred thousand dollars or more, you will receive a free year of IU. Uh, so that's pretty good. And, uh, if you guys are interested in that, obviously just use the link or, uh, reach out to them, ask them if you have any questions. And, um, I hope to, uh, to see you guys there as a trader at, at center point. Um, the prices are insanely competitive. Um, I've seen, you know, typically when new brokers come out, they, they drop, you know, prices really, really low. It's very hard to compete. And then they slowly, you know, kind of crank them all the way back up. So, um, that's what we've seen. Uh, but the difference with, uh, center point is we've seen it kind of go down in prices, which has been, uh, fantastic. So, um let's get into gma so um this one is nuts and you know there's there's the um there's the part of me where it's like all right you know cohen absolutely just you know demolished whatever squeeze was going to happen right um comes out with an atm at like this most uh important time in this in this trade whether or not it's going to squeeze to you know, God knows how we're, uh, how far, or, you know, is it going to just like absolutely, um, you know, stuff and they just sell, you know, all the way down. We don't know. And, and that's the thing. And, and I, what I learned in COVID and in 2020 is you need to have an open mind. So I'm not the guy that is perma bearish, like, all right, he's going to sell every single, you know, stock. This is going to go every single share. This is going to go down to zero. I'm, I'm still of the mindset that maybe there's a, a bigger plan here, maybe like one to 5% belief. I want to at least have that in the back of my mind so that I don't get too much conviction in any one, one direction and, and think that, you know, this thing can't continue to squeeze at the end of the day, next week or the monthlies, right? That's the one where most of the volume is. Obviously that's where the most of the open interest is uh, on those 20, um, 20 calls that uh, roaring kitty has. Um, but you know, who knows what, what the plan is. What's interesting is he was there on the first run from the beginning. And so was Cohen, right? You know, are they in cahoots? You know, they say no, or, or Ron Kitty said no, but you know, who, who really knows, you know, who knows what is actually behind this, who knows what the actual game plan is. Uh, and, and maybe it's just all nothing. Right. Um, but nothing is obvious. And that's what I learned in 2020. I think in 2020, uh, I always just put too much um, uh, weight on the fundamentals and just like, what are these idiots doing? And turns out I was the only idiot not, you know, buying these things and, and, and holding them and letting them run. I was just picking up, you know, pennies in, uh, in front of a, you know, oncoming train. So, um, you know, I, I'm not looking to, you know, sit here and fade this thing to zero. I'm just looking for opportunities. So just like, 
Friday when we had that opportunity on the ATM and, and I got short there, you know, in the 60, 55s and, and, you know, it flushed down. And then again, off the, the open, I'm not looking to let it work all day. I'm looking to take the meat, move on, look for the next piece, you know, big setup, take the meat, move on. Uh, and I think that the, the larger you play, the longer you stay, that it's kind of sideways, the more your risk goes up in the event that, you know, we get a, a headline of some sort, they've got a lot of cash, you know, does he have a plan? Does Cohen have a plan? Um, is there some major underlying plan? Who knows? But if you look online, look at the responses to, you know, some of my tweets or look at how deep these people go trying to figure out what these, you know, clues are that uh, Roar and Kitty has put out there. I mean, it is cult level craziness. And again, what I learned in 2020 is that like, you've got to appreciate that things are going to last longer than you think, right? You cannot convince somebody that they're wrong. You know, AMC shareholders will still not take anything you say seriously. They are still committed, you know, mother of all short squeezes, right? And in this case, obviously that one has unwound and everybody's down 99.99% or, or whatever. But uh, the point is, is that in the short term, none of that stuff matters. All that matters is price action and you just got to go with it. And uh, so, so far this year, I've been, you know, open-minded about that kind of stuff, but you got to think about where the crowd's going to be, right? And so ATM trade, great. A lot of people were anticipating that. Eric had a fantastic call. As soon as they pre-announced, they put out the numbers early, right? Uh, the first thing that came out of Eric's mouth was Ryan Cohen wants to sell shares. There's no other reason why he would move up the date to sell shares than to take advantage. You know, the, his goal is to take advantage of this action, which he has a fiduciary, fiducial responsibility to do so, you know, as a CEO. I mean, if you've got this ability to raise all this kind of cash, it's not about a short squeeze, you know, and, and but maybe it is, you know, you never know. But um, I think the big, big thing here is one, you know, you've got to have a plan for uh, when the ATM is completed or the potential of ATM comments. Maybe Ryan does a, a conference call next week. Uh, on Wednesday or something and says, we just wanted to have that shelf available that the, the shares available in the event that something crazy happened. We have enough cash right now. We're looking at strategic acquisitions, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, everybody that positioned short because of this huge ATM ends up, you know, in some sort of short squeeze. That is a possibility. Do I think that's the case? Am I trying to drink the Kool-Aid? No. You know, do I think that they're probably selling? Yes, I do. I, I really do based on the price action, all that kind of stuff. But you just never know. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, but you just got to have an open mind on this thing. So if you're coming in here and saying this doesn't make sense, it has to go down. Last time they sold X. This time it's going to take, you know, a week. It's going to be a pressure. It's going to go under 20. All of that's possible. But I want the price action to agree with that, whatever thesis I have. If it does not, and you end up fighting it and overstaying, that's when you run into trouble. You know, just like COVID for me, AMC, I had to learn my lesson before I absolutely crushed it, right? I learned my lesson once, twice, three times, and then crushed it. So overall, I did okay, but crushing it, you know, was minimized by learning a lesson, learning a lesson, learning a lesson, you know, three good losses in a row before you know, getting that huge, huge win. Um, and same thing with clothes, CLOV, you know, there's a lot of slippage front side, um, you know, things that, you know, think about DWAC and all those types of things, things that you've never seen before. So I think this is a little bit different. Maybe it's not as thin now, um, but, you know, it's just something to, to always consider. So um, keep that in mind, but I will be trading it at, at the same capacity that I did last week. Uh, and, uh, you know, really the, the big, opportunities are when things flush or when they parabolic right so when things if it's going one dollar two dollars then all of a sudden it spikes two or three that's an opportunity you know on a clear out move pulls back uh and so on and so forth so um just be very much aware of that and if you're not good at understanding how these circuit halts, you know, where, where they're kind of setting up and, and where your risk is there, go look at AMC, go look at FFIE, 
go look at SPWR, right? Those were three trades that I took uh, as well off of the GME action, right? So I'm looking at SPWR because that had a run up with the last GME and AMC move, right? So as it goes and as it proves to fail, now, if you just shorted SPWR because GME went down, it actually probably would have squeezed you first. You need to have the setup, right? Same thing with FFIE. FFIE, we drew a line at 76 cents. And that's been very helpful the last two or three runs now. Um, and then obviously the same thing with, with AMC, understanding where most of the open interest was, uh, which was at six last Friday. Very unlikely that it was going to close under that level. Very good level to use as sort of your risk. Um, <clears throat> so what else do we have? 2024, halfway point, success or failure. Um, so I already kind of hit upon this uh, just as far as my pivot and trading and scans in the community. Um, like I said, IU, I feel like it's 90% and you've seen a lot of new traders or not new traders, but old traders um, you know, kind of come come out and, and share a, a lot of their knowledge, which has been uh, fantastic. Um, personal development, like I said, uh, I would say the biggest issue with me still is breaking 15 to 20 year old habits, right? Um, I'm a momentum trader. I'm a volatility trader. Uh, what I have done over the last couple months, which uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying is my p l is a lot bigger with less trades, uh, focusing on one or two main names out of the, out of the open, uh, and really stopping myself from, um, going back and pushing more buttons. You know, there's been plenty of times I was doing a, a video and I see something pop up and it's like, my hands just ready to go to, to, to react to that move. Uh, but you really have to, uh, you know, kind of work through that and, 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 and focus on, on where you want to go. So, that's been the most difficult part for, for me, just because that's been what I've done for 15 or 20 years, you know, straight. Um, but, you know, as I've focused on less being more, um, that's I'm starting to turn that corner extremely well um, after, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, it, it was difficult with FFIE, AMC, GME, you know, trying to trade small or keeping a smaller account. You know, this is the new kind of way. And then it's like complete FOMO. Like maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I should have been, you know, more aggressive. Maybe I should have had a bigger account um, to, to be able to, to trade those names, the capacity that I wanted. So um, it's, it's a hybrid and, you know, I resize back up accounts and I am, but I am trading less overall. So um, that is, uh, that is a, a win for me and uh, getting, you know, one step closer. Kids are out of school on my birthday on the 14th. So uh, my goal this summer is to spend a lot more uh, time with them, as I've as I've said. Uh, a couple other things this week. We've got uh, Clover, usually Kyle, and sometimes uh, Huddy or Dom uh, webinar on the uh, 10th. So that's something that we've been doing once a month. Uh, you know, the, we, there's no competition in uh, in services world with with us. I just want to provide good information um, to the community. So, um, you know, I think that. Uh, they do a great job and uh, you know, it's a, it's a different look than, you know, sort of uh, what we do. And uh, one other thing that uh, I had approached uh, Karen at uh, Dash uh, Trader. And so Mike on June 11th, uh, which is their um, sales slash um, tutorial kind of guy. Um, he's going to be going through the first part uh, series we're going to start sort of a, a series with with Dash Trader. He's going to go sort of how to set up your layout the first time around. But then the second one, we're going to do uh, hotkeys and all these different things. Because, you know, I, I don't think, including myself, I don't even know half the things that are, no, probably 90% of the things that are in the, the back end of, of uh, Dash. So, um, you know, just from a hotkey approach and, and making things easier. You know, if you needed to borrow some shares, you can literally click a button auto you know locate the shares that you need and then automatically short you know does that cut out 10 seconds from you know your process um probably so <clears throat> just things to uh think about and make you a better trader but those are june 10th and june 11th uh and then i wanted to get into a little bit of technical analysis and then we'll get into the trade 
trades anyway for the the week ahead. So um, we've got. Let me just go ahead and. So for uh, this week, what I wanted to kind of talk about, Mara. Now I'm on a different computer, so uh, it it's not there. Um, but one of the trades that I've been taking quite a bit and that's been working extremely well um, is this 20. I'm just going to put it on a 15 or five. There we go. So if you look across, and I basically had a 2130 on my chart, and I think it was 2080s or so. Um, and this is the level that we've been using quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. And you can kind of see how many times it's gone right in that level. And so every single time it comes in there, it's not an auto short, right? Because sometimes it can pop through. But after it exhausts back through that level and fails to follow through, there's been some great opportunities, some great trades, including, you know, Friday on that short. But you can kind of see it gets a little bit of congestion in here, fails, and then it fades off, right? And so we had the same thing on Friday, and I had reminded uh, the room, basically, these, these key levels over here. So you can see that there's a little bit of congestion. And I like to put a line, you know, right where the other base is, just to kind of give a little bit more clarity once things start to really break down. Um, so typically right over here, I'm not trying to add a million lines, but I'm just trying to prove a, prove a point here. So using those prior levels, using that 2130 level, you can kind of see the exhaustion and then it comes back, starts to stay heavy. It's under VWAP. So now I like a, a scale versus that VWAP level. Assume that we're going to have some congestion over here looking left and then we start to, to fade off. And, and this, you know, again, I'm trying to show trades, good trades, good setups and reasons why it's not all hindsight. This was, uh, you know, for those in the room, obviously saw it, but um, I got short uh, over over here. And, uh, you know, basically wrote it down with the help of Bitcoin. Bitcoin started to fail. And obviously you could trade, you know, CLSK off of that. You could trade uh, Riot off of that. Uh, but my choice was uh, Mara. And the reason for that, uh, again, with DAS, you can save. Uh, we went over it last time, but you can save your trend lines. And so every time when I'm on the, the computer behind me, um, you know, it's going to pop up and I can see those trend lines that I have saved. And it's like, oh, yeah, that was resistance last time. So anytime there's a point that gives you a little bit of pause, it's like, oh, there's a big seller here. There's there's a notable seller here or notable support. Draw a line on the chart because next time you see it in that range, it's going to help you. And in fact, it actually helped me with GPS over here. I had lines from this day over here. And when it came back over here, it respected them perfectly. Uh, and, and that was really interesting to just see how much uh, just a simple line can actually help your, your trading process. So again, that was the Mara trade and, and I can post the, the short as well. I already did. You can see it in the, in the, the room in the images, but um, that, that was Mara. Another one that we had was this TPHS and TPHS I gave a, you know, example I always tell people to kind of, you know, where have you seen this before? And this is a, an SSR trap. SSR trap is, is something that you want to be cautious of, especially in a, in a hot market, like a hot cycled um, small cap market. And, you know, we just had seen it on this uh, FRGT. And so FRGT goes up, right? But nobody can slam the bid, right? Because SSR is on. So what they do is they just slowly let people kind of walk it down, walk it down, walk it down. And what happens is they ramp it up, you know, you've got some shorts trying, they miss, it kind of comes back up, they scale. But then you start to see the offers get heavy, 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 heavy. And they can swipe those offers, but keep it heavy. Swipe the offer, keep it heavy. When they swipe those offers, they know that they're soaking shorts, right? Because why wouldn't that seller just hit the bid? Because they can't, because they're shorts. So what they do is they let Shorts, walk it down under view up. Let them feel good about what's going on. And then it kind of ramps back up, squeezes out a little bit, starts to fail to follow through. They let them fade it again right back to, guess what, same spot. And this we've seen quite a bit with that sub-dollar trap. Right around $0.99 cents or a dollar, we talked about it on MLGO, and we talked about it on GNS were the last two, and those were examples that I had posted on, on Twitter. Um, but what you want to do is look at what 
key area? What's the backstop? What's everybody using as risk, right? And so 135 was obviously that key level. Then VWAP starts to hold. And now this 135, which was resistance, now starts to consolidate and become the top. So edge, where does it come from, right? Either the next blowout move and it starts to have some sort of, um, you know, channel that, that sets up or that 135 level. So you want to let this thing do whatever it wants to do over 135 and not get too aggressive on the front side. Remember, you want to be on the same side as sellers. There's no reason for sellers in here yet. Still none. Still none. Still none. Now it comes back up and it fails at that same 135 level. Now there's going to be competition with sellers, not just shorts. Before, most of the sellers were just shorts, right? And then they get bent. They get cleared out over this key level. So over the high day, this is essentially a high day kind of clear out. Uh, and then it mean reverts back down and then your edge is formed under that 135 level. And you can risk towards, you know, something like the, the recent high over here, or, you know, 150s or so, and then scale in a, accordingly each time it potentially retests and fails. And, you know, most people want stuff to go straight down, but you really do want these kind of like little push-ups, you know, just because it keeps people on their toes. Anybody that's price sensitive gets out. Dip buyers might, you know, kind of average down. And then the bottom drops out again. You've got less shorts because some of them covered that were price sensitive. And you have more longs that now need to sell uh, because they were averaging down. So uh, perfect opportunity there. So I basically compared this TPH uh, S to not only FRGT with the, with the, SSR trap, which is exactly what we had here. They let, you know, shorts kind of walk it down, let shorts walk it down while they're holding a, a similar base, right? So this was the first level, the first two levels that I had given in the, in the room to be aware of. Um, and then it ramps up. You can see this kind of uh, holding pattern. So we're putting in a top basically supply zone 46 while it, there's like a 41 base. So where does your edge come from? Same concept as FRGT, right? Where the, uh, base becomes resistance. So support becomes resistance over here. And then guess what? That's the first point where sellers are like, uh oh, I probably should have sold. That's when it's a good short. It's fine to be short. It's fine to be, you know, ahead a little bit on the front side as long as it's small size. But what is the point where, or where is the point when longs say it's time to get out and that's when you want to be on the same side on the short side and that's exactly right here where the 41 becomes top instead of you know swipe back up over that that prior level and then each time it breaks under one of those key levels you start to have more and more failed follow-through and then it starts to open up and obviously we had this really really good opportunity so the trade that i compared it to was uh crkn which you've got to go back to the prior run of um GME and, and FFIE, but very, very similar. And, you know, they, they basically trapped everybody into VWAP, same kind of situation again. They blew everybody out, cleared out, right? So you've got sort of that mean revert. You had the higher day over here, clears everybody out, and you've got this base over here. And then it finally gives way, right? So same situation. And this is exactly what I had said on Friday on TPHC, uh, TPHS rather, uh, look for a very similar move to Kraken where it potentially just unwinds for all the way back. So again, ask yourself, where have you seen this stuff before? And the concept came just the day before with FRGT where they trap all the SSR shorts and then they have to blow out, you know, they're off sides. You got to blow out the folks that are off sides, then it comes back in and then that's where your edge is. Uh, if you're on the same side as everybody, if you're on the crowded side, you're you're just, you know, you're, you're at liberty of whatever happens. And if it continues to go and squeezes out, goes into a circuit halt, you know, that's on you. You want to be on the same side as sellers. You want supply overhead. You want most people now on the wrong side. On the way up, all shorts are on the wrong side, right? And after it blows out and comes back down, shorts are blown out and now longs are on the wrong side. So that is sort of the concept of the why. Um, same kind of concept on VST on the daily. 
and you can kind of see, uh, you know, you, you're looking for the potential, you know, short all these days. And, you know, it finally fades off. You're like, all right, this is the time. And then all of a sudden it breaks back through, right? So a lot of times it's good to put these lines on the chart. Where was the prior high? They just kind of squeeze everybody out. And then once it breaks back under that key level, guess what? Nice failed follow through. We just had that on SG as well, um, where it's kind of hanging out and it does just enough, clears out those prior highs and then fades, right? So if you keep this line on your chart, it's going to give you some good opportunities. Um, so always, always throw these lines up on your chart. Um, NVIDIA. Last thing before we get into the watches for the week ahead, fantastic opportunity on Thursday. Um, this was a, a really nice option setup. You guys saw the, the trade that I took there. Um, hopefully the, the goal was basically a 1250 sort of clear out. Uh, we had a very overextended uh, daily chart, been pretty much straight up. You've seen the same thing with something like SMCI, you know, over here on, on this day right here. Um, I mean, it would have been nice if NVIDIA did that, but the difference is on something like this. And, and the mistake that I made was, you know, I, I've made the trade on Thursday, but then I held, um, I had sold a good chunk of them, um, but I held some, you know, freebies just in case. But it's unlikely that it was going to unwind because everybody's holding for the forward split, right? So now I think that the crowded trade is sell the news, sell the forward split. So yeah, I'm prepared for that. I'm prepared for that for Monday. And, you know, it's going to be at a new price. Uh, it's going to have the, you know, everybody's going to have received their shares. Um, but I think that everybody is of the mindset that it's to sell the news. And what we've seen lately over the last maybe two months is there's been a lot of zero dated moves, is zero dated option moves, um, meaning like the huge moves have been on either that Thursday or Friday, a lot of them on Friday, um, Thursday this week with NVIDIA. Uh, which is why those those options moved as well as they did. I think some of them were two to eighteen. I mean, they were all like four to five to eight hundred percent. The ones that uh, I had I had snagged. Um, but the uh, the point is is that um, I'm not so sure that I'm going to be super super aggressive. Uh, if it, if it comes in the wheelhouse and everything's you know perfect on Monday for sure. You know, if it gaps up over the recent highs and blows out. And it gives that opportunity. Yes, that's a setup for me. Uh, but am I going in that, that this is a, a free money, like obvious sell the news event? I'm not. I'm, I'm really not. AI is hot. It's just the beginning. There's ton of huge, you know, orders and and um, you know all the things are, are are working for it. So I'm ready for Monday, but I'm I'm hopeful and more prepared for a Thursday Friday trade. Is is my goal. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but, you know, I just wanted to kind of go over uh, that and uh, see what we've got. Um, or at least let's get get ready for the week ahead. So anyway, uh, as always, I am not a financial advisor. These are not buy or sell recommendations. And this is for educational and informational purposes only. So. Uh, First and foremost, we have uh, Mara. It's just a daily great opportunity. If we're stuck in a 500 range on Bitcoin, then it's not worth it, right? You're going to make a lot of decisions and then you're going to have Bitcoin run, you know, a thousand any one direction. You're going to be off sides on this Mara with too much size and you get, end up getting chopped up. The days to trade this thing are the days that Bitcoin's got a couple thousand dollars of range. You know, where it's unwinding a thousand and a thousand or it's breaking out, you know, a thousand and a thousand. The 500 to thousand kind of um, consolidation pattern, not worth it. Uh, more often than not, I end up getting chopped up in that kind of thing. But this has had literally trades every single day for um, for for weeks now. <clears throat> a lot of big trades over here, uh, a lot of big trades over here. And then there's just like the range every day has been like two dollars a share. So it's been pretty good. Um, GMC, AMC, FFIE, you know, they're all kind of, uh, to me, they're all the same. And, uh, I, I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm honestly hopeful that something crazy happens on GME. Um, you know, people that are, are saying, you know, that, 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 you know, they hope it go down and, and, um, this is all manipulation. All Like who cares? You're a trader, like take advantage of the opportunity that's given to you. Right. Um, so I, I'm 
I'm team like let's get this thing going. Like let let's let's create history again and and see what happens. Um, but I'm also a realist. So for now, I'm going to assume that uh, you know all pops end up getting sold, and I'll let the tape prove that. However, if it starts to go sideways and grind up, I am absolutely fine with the idea of getting along. So I'm not making a call either way. I'm not looking to be right no matter what. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking to be prepared. Um, so you've got a couple, you know, you, you potentially have, uh, if they end up doing a, a conference call of some sort, it's going to be interesting to see how the end of the week with the options, uh, you know, whether or not he comes up with the cash for that. Uh, and, or do we go under 20? Do we continue just to blow everybody out? We don't know. So don't try to be a hero on this thing. Uh, but have an open mind. Uh, and that said, AMC FFIE right there with it. FFIE was a fantastic trade off the 76 level. Um, and if you just draw a line at 76 and you go back. You can see why, right? So every single time it's come up to this level does not mean it's an auto short at 76 because the day that it builds at 26 is the day that it's going to squeeze. But that has been the key level. That's been the, the spot that, you know, you've needed to care about um, all the way down. Remember this day when it flushed down, right? Uh, and if you look all the way across, it's been a super, super key congestion spot. So that was the reason for the trade on Friday as well. Uh, for those that were in IU, you know, I was getting short and ended up being a, a really nice opportunity. So um, same kind of concept over here. Uh, obviously, you know, if your size on the front side, that's a silly thing to do in this market. Let things kind of blow out and then start to participate. Um, next up, felt ball through NVIDIA. The usual, let's see what happens. We've got the forward split, let it do its thing. Ideally, if this gapped up 1250 equivalent and went for a parabolic 1300, I'm reacting to that trade with puts and, you know, I'm going to go for it. Um, but, uh, you know, otherwise, I hope that it just kind of bores people out Monday through Wednesday. And they're like, ah, oh, you know, it wasn't really that big of an event. All of a sudden, Thursday, Friday, it, it comes in. That's the action that I want. Um, I'm good at anticipating that range. And those are the only times that I've been trading options. I, I rarely trade options. Um, and uh, I haven't traded spy options for forever. At some point, if we went to 550 or, you know, went crazy on spy, I probably would. Um, <clears throat> but I think if you try to do that every single day, overall, you're going to lose money. Uh, TPHS, VS, VERO, these are all Ones that I like to keep on radar, if they pop in the morning, I'm going to be looking for fades. Uh, people tend to take them off radar. There's still a lot of mileage you can get out of them on day two, day three. Um, NVAX, fantastic. Uh, obviously, you guys saw um, that uh, short on Thursday. That was a nice one. Um, nice little clear out move. And basically, I was shorting uh, all pops. Uh, around 25 versus the 26 level. And that was a really nice opportunity there into the open. I'd be watching all pops again, uh, as long as it does not start to build trend over 1920 or so. And that, that level comes from just looking left. And that would be sort of the area where it would probably start to um, reverse trend. So you can kind of see 1920, 1970s. So any good pop into this level, I would look to fade it. If it were to start to build over that level, that would void any short side thesis. Uh, SG, I'm just going to keep on watch for any failed follow through. That was a really nice, uh, you know, unwinder there. Um, and then moving on to the continuation side of things, uh, CSSC was a pretty good uh, trader back um, when I traded it last time, but it's gone away. I mean, it, it, nobody's cared about it. It's got no volume, and all of a sudden, it starts to kind of perk back up, right? So. Um, no position right now, uh, high risk. I think they're due for some filings and, you know, potential bankruptcy, who knows. Uh, but the thing about that is when uh, things go bankrupt, that doesn't mean that they go down anymore. So uh, it's still definitely something that I am interested in watching uh, because these, this is the market for sure. If you think back to uh, Hertz, HTZ, and HTZQ or HT, 
TQ. I don't remember what it was, but whatever the case was, it went nuts, right? So again, oh, they're going bankrupt. Crowd shorts doesn't go down. What happens? Trade reverses. And that's what really happened on, on Hertz and then ended up compounding and had, you know, one trap after another after another and then just went nuts. Um, so potential on CSSE. Um, yes, high risk. Yes, potential bankruptcy. Yes, potential delist. Um, but, you know, we've got the volume here. This is sort of the cleanup move. <clears throat> Hasn't gone away. They've supported 28s for quite some time. It's notable. Worth an eye. SSI. Uh, SISI, rather. Um, I just realized that it was China, but this was, uh, I had taken the, the long, um, I think it was like 180s or so. I don't remember exactly, but uh, then I had ditched it. Then I relonged it. But uh, this is probably the ramp portion of, you know, these Chinese fraud type liquidation trades. So just be aware of that. Um, but, you know, so far so good. Keep an eye on it. Let it let it continue to, to ramp higher. We'll see what happens. Uh, the spec, I think, had a decent move after hours here. Um, on the chart, it was kind of front loaded already, ready to roll. And then they ramped it up after hours. So I'm thinking we might have like a VS or a VERO type of, of opportunity there. Um, this NVVE is uh, is one that I want to just watch uh, for the potential of a liquidity trap. Um, this was another one where we were talking about the clear out move. And, uh, you know, this is a discussion that was in the, uh, the room where, uh, you know, it's a very clean, clear, steady seller versus that VWAP level. But I had mentioned uh, right over here that uh, I feel like they're trying to, tr you know, set up this this trap uh, versus this 135 level, and you can see they did that goalie pull that we talk about. So they uh, they they made 135 the top every single time it went up there. They put huge offers, and then it pulled back, um, kind of you know setting the table, so to speak, uh, for all these shorts to you know it's it's free money versus the 135. Then all of a sudden it's 140. They panic, they exit, and that was the liquidity they needed to get out of the rest of their shares. Right? You can see uh, a million um 500 and then a million shares so pretty quick two million shares two and a half million shares within a, a couple minutes which was otherwise just you know 20 30 or a hundred thousand um so that one uh as the only one that i talked about that i'm actually long is this asst um so far that looks like there's a decent fire in the tape um i'll change my mind whenever you know this thing starts to fail to follow through uh, but just something to keep an eye on. And the last but not least, another ramp. Um, you know, this, again, good good chart, good squeeze, good move. Uh, but you just have to know what you're trading. And at some point, this is going to drop 80% or, you know, whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, this is one of those <clears throat> that does a lot of washing of volume and crosses and, and all that good stuff. So keep an eye on that um, and just be cautious of potential, you know, circuit halts and, and things like that. Um, but that's about it. So um, I try to always, you know, go through uh, enough uh, different kind of style uh, trades for different traders, uh, whether it's long, short or, you know, really real momentum. Um, but, you know, for me, I think my focus is uh, is going to be just the um, is going to be the GME um, Mara GME. And then if GME is active and gives us that that good action, AMC and FFIE. Um, and the biggest trade I would probably prepare for would be NVIDIA. Um, I'm prepared for it for Monday. Gap up, parabolic, potential unwind. Uh, but I, I still am of the mindset that I think people are going to set up. All do the same thing. It's going to absorb. It's going to blow out. And then we're going to have the trade later in the week. Um, so that's that. And let me just see here. I, of course, I didn't get prepared on um, coming up with some uh, some winners. So let me go to last week's video. And uh, by the way, Chris dropped a uh, video on on options. So for those of you guys that have uh, you know interest in options, he did a beginner's guide um, guide to 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 options. Um, all right, so. D I D I E R one zero one one. You've got the t shirt for this week and days D A Y Z three zero six. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I do hope that you are enjoying 
um, you know, the other Sunday videos. And uh, as always, like I said, center point, uh, if you fund with 100K, you get a free year of IU. Um, solid deal, as well as uh, 30, it's $3,500 of credits, actually. So it's better than what I said. So uh, a 30 to $50,000 accounts, uh, 750 credit. Um, 50 to 100,000 is 1,500 credit. Uh, 100,000 to 250 is a 3,000 credit. And 250K plus is a $7,500 credit. Uh, but you can check out the uh, link in the description. Uh, and all information is there. So guys, we'll see you in the room on Monday. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend. I hope this weather stays nice. And I will tell you right before I got on Sunday video, part of the whole simplicity thing, one of the rentals, one of the, the fridges, uh, went. So this is why I'm trying to simplify my life because here we are a weekend. All I need to worry about is this Sunday video. And then now I got to worry about a fridge. So uh, simplify your life and enjoy it and have a good rest of the weekend.